Hi there, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And the last stream, uh, we mostly concentrated on getting a load of the sciences advanced a bit further forward. So, we had some problems with various different ones, um, partly due to upgrades, partly due to just, well, the, pr the way you progress through the game. And so, we've, I feel like we've made some good progress here. The first leap forward was in the deep space science area, and it was largely uh, around the Arcospheres, and so Mike has now been able to go off and get some. Uh, and this, this required a large quantity of particle stream, which I'll talk about later, uh, in order to make a large quantity of antimatter, which then you can use to make the antimatter canisters, which you can make, use to make the Arcosphere collectors. Once you've got the Arcosphere collectors, you can then fly out in a spaceship, one that's capable of going long distances, for example, of this one here. So you can see in here we've got we've got uh, some probe rockets, we've got some Arcosphere collectors, and I imagine in a box, well, yes, down here there is a um, there's a rocket silo and some miscellaneous bits and pieces to allow you to place stuff. And so, uh, if we have a look in the Informatron, you can see that Mike has been out travelling, and he went out to, uh, he went, well, he first went to Breadcrumbs, then to Broken Mirror, and then to Astral Snow, and from each of those places, he launched five Arcosphere collectors, and managed to get five Arcospheres from each one, which is about what you'd expect, as you can tell. And then also, um, those far, those 15 Arcosphere launches he did, because he did them out in in deep space, uh, in, granted in an asteroid field, but it's, it's still, they count as deep space, he also managed to pull 37 additional Arcospheres out of the interstellar void. And there's a case, a, sort of a bit of diminishing returns on that one, and I talk about this more in the Arcosphere um, guide that, that I produced a couple of years back. But the idea, essentially the idea is that um, each, each whenever you launch an Arcosphere collector, it draws from two pools. There is the overall deep space, the voids of deep space, this is just absolutely anywhere pool. And then there is a pool for each individual asteroid field that you go out to. So, Mike came out to the ones down uh, down here, so he did uh, Breadcrumbs, Broken Mirror, and Astral Snow. I have no idea where Astral Snow is, but he did that one as well. And so his first launches from there, he got five Arcospheres each uh, for the first two, and then four for each the next three. Um, and as you can see, so diminishing returns. So uh, you start off getting, I think it's something like four Arcospheres per per launch you do from the deep space, it's from the deep interstellar void, but that quickly starts to drop off. By his 15th launch, he only got one from that, from, from the, from the void there. However, you also get the ones from the, the, uh, the pools for the each individual asteroid field as well. And so those you get one, I think you get one for each one for the first five or so, typically, and then, it's, and then it starts to drop off as well. So that means you essentially, if you want to keep, if you want to maximise your gains, you do need to keep moving around. Uh, however, even despite that, because of that overall void level, whilst you might get five from your first launch, if you then go out to an, another asteroid field, like if you went out to Godash, for example, then he'd only get two or possibly one from his first launch. And so he'd, he'd come back from having launched five collectors, and instead of coming back with 22 Arcospheres like he did from the first place, he'd come back with five or six or something like that, depending on just how, exactly how lucky he gets. There's a bit of there's a bit of randomness in there, but the idea is that essentially your, your first few Arcospheres are very, very easy to obtain. You get quite a lot for each launch, but then later on in the game, you start it starts to be a lot more of a struggle. And so it's very difficult to get huge numbers of Arcospheres, but it's quite easy to get about to get your first sort of 50 or so. So he came back with his 52 Arcospheres from the first three uh, first three asteroid fields and dumped them all into the in, into the strong box at the top here. That meant they went into the system here. They got they got turned into miscellaneous Arcospheres and and this recipe flips over, flips back and forth between whether it's producing uh, lambda zeta epsilon gamma or whether it's producing psi theta phi omega. Uh, so you'll always put four in and get four out, but it'll change exactly which four you, you get out on the other side. And so they then run down here, and he's got his balancing system, which I talked about uh, last week and the week before, that's going to then churn through them all and, in theory, give back the ones he wants. Over here, then, we're going to be, we've got this uh, this time ring system over here, where there, there is something you can turn on or off. I'm, I, I, I don't know. Is it on this thing? Yeah, so I can set the filters on here, and then it will pass out one of each Arcosphere in turn. When it does that... Those will then, in theory, those will get passed on to these uh, grav facilities along here, which will then, and this is the exciting part, they will then turn them into the um, in, into the um, data cards as required in order to make Deep Space Science three catalogs. Now these take a little while to run. It's a it's a thirty second, twenty second recipe, and they're running at a crafting speed of one. So yeah, they'll they'll churn through it gradually. He needs some tweaking is going to be required with the numbers over here, I think, to, to make sure that the arcospheres come out at the correct rate. However, I think this this area is going to have a little bit of a redesign because there's going to be other stuff required as well from the arcospheres. So I think what he's I think what he's planning to do, and I may be correct. 
I may get corrected about this, and I may change change my uh, change my story next week. Is that this this belt is going to be extended quite a lot, and then we're going to have not only are these machines going to be running off it, but we're going to have the machines that make the uh, the Naquium tesseracts, the machines that will make the quantum process no Naquium processors, and machines that will do deep space science for type packs as well. So all the Arcosphere processing is going to be done off this belt and it's going to be sushied using this system over here where as I talked about last week this clock down here rattles through all the different um, different types of Arcosphere and, and that's then connected to this this uh, inserter down here. So it will it will then out uh, it will then put out a stream of all of the Arcospheres and we've essentially got a very very slow sushi belt running around here and then we then get the Arcospheres passed back out onto the other side of the belt they can be passed around. Now there was a suggestion that perhaps these should be long filter inserters instead of short filter inserters meaning that they would then put the Arcospheres back onto the far side of the belt, they would run along here and then drop straight back in without getting uh, snaffled up by the other machines. But that doesn't really matter. Uh, it does mean that you will end up with a little bit of an imbalance. And some of these machines, as you can see, this one here ha currently has two Zetas in it, but no Omegas. So the balance has been thrown off a little bit. Some of the machines will start to hog a few of the Arcospheres. But let's say it doesn't really matter. As long as we get up to sort of maybe 200 Arcospheres, or maybe, maybe even only 150, then we'll probably, we should have enough that even if a few of them get stolen by these machines, there'll still be enough running around here, and the folding and the inverting will make sure that everything stays balanced. So you should, it should be okay. We should be able to produce everything we need. And you can see up there, because all of these have run, we've now, we now need to do a little bit of filtering of the Arcospheres in order to get them, or a little bit of folding of the Arcospheres, rather, in order to get them back to the sort of the, the basics of what, of, of, um, the basic proportions of what we want to have. And so that means we have now been able to start making these uh, Deep Space Catalog 3s. That did require a train to be brought in, bringing in some, some cryonite, because that's another thing you need in order to run this machine, but sure, that's not too difficult. We have a decent supply of cryonite available. And then that, and then they can run down here, and where they can be brought around the bottom here, and in, in theory, they'll be loaded into these machines to be made into the catalogs. Now, unfortunately, we haven't researched the catalogs yet. They are, they are in the queue, so we will be researching them at some point, but for some reason we're doing a Rocket Reusability 17 first, which requires 131,000 of many of the basic science packs. So, it's, uh, it's not using up any of the deep space science or any, any, any particularly valuable science packs, but it is taking a long time because it's 131,000. I think this might have been something we were just running while we we're waiting for other things to become available for research. And so, once we've researched that Deep Space Science Pack 3, we'll then be able to program these three machines to do Deep Space Science Pack 3. They'll then kick in and start working. Well, I say they'll kick in and start working. That's not quite true. Because if we come in here and have a look at what's required for it, well, you need Naquim Tesseracts, which we straight up don't have. They're going to need to be dropped onto the other side of this belt, so may I guess they'll come in and be popped pop, pop, pop in on the, on the, on the, uh, uh, from the, from the left there, and then that'll bring them down and put them on the wrong side of the belt down here. Maybe they'll, they'll be, they'll be sh sh spaghettied in up here somewhere, probably, I expect. Um, because we were originally expecting the, uh, catalogs to come in along this belt, because this is the station where they where catalogs get dropped off passed around to here, and so they go onto the, the bottom side of the belt, which is what uh, Mike has now done here. He's made sure that they do go onto the correct side of the belt. However, um, that, that didn't take into account the fact that we're going to be making the catalogues here, because you need to do all of the Arcosphere stuff, and so it made sense to keep the Arcospheres in this sort of area, or at least we thought it did at the time. Whether we, whether it makes sense to have them here or not, it, it, it's, it's open to debate. I, I think we, we could have... I think we did... We had a reason for putting them here um, instead of over with the rest of the deep space science production stuff over here, here, but I can't remember what that reason was now. Maybe then, because I, I don't think that they're, they're not needed for anything beyond the catalogue level, so we don't need them down here. We do need them for making the tesseracts, but then we could have brought the tesseracts over by train. And th there are there are lots of different options. Um, we've just we've decided to put it over here, and I can't remember why. But other than that, we're, we're in a pretty good position because the significant data is being brought in along here already. We've got the uh, comprehensive Deep Space Catalogs, as, we, as I said. The Deep Space Science Pack 2s are coming along this belt, so they can be fed in by this long inserter here. And the Advanced Neural Gel is in the pipes, uh, ready to go straight into the sides of the machines here. And, and we've got the Thermofluid uh, all, all hooked up as well. So it's, go it's, it's pretty good. The only thing we need to worry about is the Tesseract, and that requires Naquium Cubes. But conveniently, we have a supply of Naquium Cubes here, so that's not going to be too bad. Um, also, then a load of Arcospheres and Cryonite. Oh, we're going to need to bring in Naquium as well. Um, fine. So, okay, th this might have been a reason to make the to do all the Arcosphere and, and Naquium stuff and, and Tesseract stuff over on in the other area, but yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. We can bring Naquium in here as well on another train, uh, and it'll, it'll. Oh, we actually we've, no, we've already got the ingots here, so we can split. Uh, and in fact, that means we will have. Yes, we've got the plates over here. I think we'll split off another um, another belt from here and, and take take that off and make the plates elsewhere in order to make into the Tesseracts. But 
yes, we, we, we've got all the stuff around here that we need now. It's just a case of, of implementing it and making sure that the, um, the Arcosphere folding in production and just everything over here is basically happy and can keep up. We may need to, I suspect what we'll probably do is, uh, we'll leave Mike in charge of this area for the time being, I think. But he can go off to other other um, deep space areas, and st either in the ship or without, or send the ship off there. It probably doesn't matter as long as there's a roboport in it. And then he can have more Arcosphere generation running while he carries on building up all of these things. Because there's going to be quite a lot of flight time between those, even going via Fenestra. Mike says he's also tweaked his lowness detector, which is um, how the system decides whether it needs to do folding. And that is, that's based on when, whether you have lower than a certain percentage of a specific uh, arcosphere type. So previously, I think it was on 10%, which given that with there being eight different arcospheres, means that it should be able to get to a, a balanced solution. However, because we've only got 50, uh, 52 of them, that's a relatively low number. And so the rounding numbers in there, the rounding in there is, is, is causing some issues. So in the, for the time being, he has now reduced the, uh, the lowness level that he's triggering on down to seven percent instead so we watch so they'll only so these recipes will only run if there's fewer than seven percent of whatever arcosphere they're watching for so that's why this that's allowed the system to calm down a little bit but as we increase the number of arcospheres in it we can nudge that back up a little bit to get these numbers a little bit more similar so if we look at this we can see we've got uh, we've got almost almost a hundred percent difference between the number of um, epsilons and number of lambdas there going from four to seven uh, so it's not perfectly balanced but it's it's close enough, and, it's, and it means the system will the system will base is, is, is keeping in at least some supply of absolutely everything. Um, and with the, uh, with the with the with with all the belts along here being connected up, it, it it looks absolutely horrendous. But it does mean that we can consider all of the belt area to be storage as well when we're doing all of the maths over here and deciding whether these things need to run or not. We do have some other ideas for setting up Arcosphere systems. However, uh, none of them are particularly rel n none of them are ones we're going to implement um, in in this playthrough. We, but we may play around with some of them uh, for for interest for yours and ours uh, at a later date. Meanwhile, Tristan has been continuing his work on the Advanced Science Pack One. This is the one that. Um, very rudely changed while we were uh, working on the um, working working on systems, uh, work, uh, and the, the recipes changed in in the update. So we already had advanced science running. Uh, that was the one that was up here somewhere on the bus. But I think I think we probably now removed it. Yes, it's probably it was probably the one that was in here. I imagine. No, nope, I take it back. It was this it was this one here that's just straight up not working because all of the inputs are wrong, as you can see. If we we look in here. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't match up at all. And even the stuff required to make the advanced catalogue doesn't match any of this. So this should all be ripped up and put back into the system, but never mind. Anyway, so Tristan's been working on the data cards for it over here. And there, there are there are four data cards that are required as usual. I take that back. There are three data cards and a combined catalogue required. So there's four things required as usual. So the remote sensing data, I believe, is the one that you send off a probe to, to fly off into deep. You launch it off into space and it comes back with those data cards. So that, that's relatively easy. Then you have the uh, quantum computation and power density data. Those are again are those are fairly easy. All they require is, uh, cert is, is is certain bits to be fed in, and these are all bits that we already have. So up here, for example, we've got the quantum computation data, which requires quantum processors to be brought in, and we have a train to do that. As you can see, it's bring them along here, dropping them off onto the belt. Great. You also need blank data cards. Well, we've got those on the train systems as well, so that can be brought in, and thermofluid, which we can again bring in on the train system. Cool it down here with the radiator and the hypercoolers over here, and he doesn't need very much of it, as you can tell by the fact there's only three machines doing this uh, they can be pumped in that can be pumped in here and you've got these cards coming out we've also got the power density data which requires lithium sulfur batteries available on Norvis so they can just be shipped up so we've got another one of our um, sushi train systems coming up here that's bringing up all the supplies from Norvis that could be required for this particular build and that requires so it's the, the lithium sulfur batteries he started making the energy control units down on Norvis as well holmium accumulators he started making up here because they're apparently a little bit more awkward those require the energy control units as well and the um, and by the looks of it iridium girders and normal accumulators so those are all being brought up by the train system uh, and then all of these things we can well we can pass the accumulators back up from here there's a yeah the belt loops around like that and they go in over here now it looks like down here we've run out of something that's required for the holmium accumulators uh, we seem to be short of Holmium Cable, uh, which is yet another another thing that's brought up from Norvis. So I'm slightly surprised that's having having issues. Maybe the train's just a little bit busy. I, I don't know. But if it, but the uh, the system the system basically works as you can tell by the fact we've got a number of those um uh, the, those cards coming down here. So eventually the plan will be to pick those up with a train, take them over to this exciting area over here, where we can also make the combined catalogues, which are made out of all of the other catalogues, as you can see. Uh, we'll combine all those together in, around here, and we can make the advanced catalogues, and then turn them into the advanced science packs, feed, and then feed them over into the, in, into the science labs down here. So, all reasonably straightforward. 
Uh, the other part of that that needs mentioning is, of course, that Tristan put in an additional train down here on uh, Norvis to bring that up, as I was saying. And it looks like, well, we seem to be feeding the Holmium cables in here. Those are, those are stopped. The train is not departing. So it looks like this has not been set up properly. Uh, we need to also have a uh, watch for circuit condition of, what is it, I equals um, something? I equals 16. So here we can set when I equals 16. Then, the then we can trigger the train to leave, and that'll take the stuff up as required. Now, it's possible that he just had it deactivated because he wasn't ready for stuff to come up yet, but I think it's probably just it hadn't been programmed properly. So, that will now release that train, and we'll have a nice steady supply of all the stuff we need to make the advanced science packs. Lovely. So, over here, what did he need? Well, he needed the advanced girders, though that's fine, they were already on the system here. Holmium cables, same. These ba these lithium sulfur batteries, same again. Now, these, the but the other two, the accumulators and the, what are the control units, something like that, energy control units, those I believe needed to be made. So, I'm not sure where that was done, but we do have a search thing installed. So, if I, uh, if I do search factory, I can say I want to look for products. So, this is finding machines that make the thing, and then I want to find... Uh, Energy control units, this one. So I click on that, it'll search for it. Boop, there we go. Uh, some being made in Norbit apparently, but over down here on the ground we have a load of these being made over here. Um, where is this? This is just... <laughs> okay, this, this must be a new area. Yes, this is a new area he built up. And so like I was saying uh, last week with the, uh, the, the oil processing, we can now compact things down so much because we have these faster machines making them that we now have just... Well, he's, he's squeezed the machines making these uh, electronic control units into the, into the gap up the sides of the stations here because he's, he reckoned he only needed eight of these machines. Now, it does look like we've run out of... Oh, yes, we've run out of the, um, the, the uh, Immersite crystals. So that is a problem. We need to go and try and find some more of those or rather try and start making those a bit more quickly. But he's managed to squeeze the construction of those into the gap down here and also squeeze the... Uh, and then he's got a row of machines over here that's taking the batteries in from here and the iron in. Well, he's got iron ingots coming in that's being turned into plates, brought up here, and that can make accumulators which can be fed into a train. And those, I would assume, are then being brought down to the banks and banks of stations down here. Yes, here we go. So accumulators are being dropped off here. The energy control units would be probably, probably being dropped off in this one. Let's have a quick look. Nope, that's fertilizer. Maybe this one. Yes, this one, energy control units being dropped off here. Oh yes, if I look closely, we can see we can see the energy control units in the in the uh, combinator there. So those will be dropped off into this station, and we'll head up these these belts. So these these are the ones that are bringing all of those things over to his uh, his new his new train that's going up to Norb at Norbit and supply supplying the new the new factory area with with those bits and pieces. That then brings up brings up the question of why are we short so short of immersite crystals? What's the problem there? And what we see there's some coming through here. It's, that's not a particularly fast uh, flow, but there is at least some. It's coming out of these machines over here. Uh, but a lot of these, most of, in fact most of these, this entire half bank and a lot of these ones don't seem to be running. It looks like we're not getting enough immersite powder through, uh, and that's coming from over here. Is some of it getting stolen for other things? The, no, these are different. That, this is this crushed. Yeah, that's crushed immersite. This is immersite powder. So we've got. A flow of, of immersite powder coming out here. It's going around this way. It's being. It's not being sent sent up here because we have enough. Presumably because we have enough of the um, uh, enough of the plates already. That's so that's good. But down here, they're just yeah. All these machines do in general seem to be running. I think it just this this area just needs to be upgraded. We we, we haven't we haven't been fiddling with the um, the immersite production for a long time, and so we've got quite a lot of it just sitting on the belts here, not being used. All these machines need to be upgraded to higher tier chemical plants and and have um, pro probably productivity modules put in them and better beacons so this th basically just this area needs to be redesigned so maybe that's something I'll do next week because I don't have a huge amount uh, on, on my plate at the moment but it's good to see why why there's a problem but it, there is definitely very much a problem we're just not churning through all of the stuff from down here anything like quickly enough you, as you can tell by just all of these stalled belts along here we so yeah this needs a good kicking needs to be made to run a lot faster and then hopefully at that point we'll be able to start making the the emosite crystals a bit quicker and then we'll be able to start making the advanced science that we want and so I hinted or talked earlier about how we were very, very short of antimatter for the um, for producing the uh, Arcosphere collectors, and how uh, Mike was just stealing it all as fast as it could be made, and there were problems with problems with particle stream and so on. Well, it seems looks like we're still pretty short of antimatter. However, the problem has been nudged down at least one level because antimatter is being made yes up here, and now as you can see, we ha now have plenty of particle stream, and there's a couple of reasons for this. One of them is because I came in at the beginning of the stream and I built up this extra... I expanded the uh, Deep Space Science cloud production area over here. So now I've put in all of these machines along here making additional plasma. Um, okay, some of them aren't because they don't have any power. We, need, we clearly need another um, pylon or maybe even two pylons along here to power them all. However, we do seem to have... 
um, enough plasma. They, the, the, the the handful I put it, that I put in and that are actually working have been enough to produce to produce the additional. And so now that means with these with these machines along here producing the uh, the plasma as fast, sorry producing the particle stream as fast as they can, we've now managed to fill up all these pipes. We are producing it faster than the uh, Deep Space Science one and two catalog production over here is using it. And as you can see, we've now got all four of these belts are full. We're backed up completely on the uh, on the Deep Space Science catalog ones. It looks like things are going really really well over here. We've produced everything we need. Now that is admittedly because as I said earlier. We are currently doing a rocket re reusability research, which doesn't use any of the later on science packs. It just requires enormous quantities of science packs, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll churn, we're churning through them instead of using the deep space science ones, which means this area is, is now basically fast asleep. However, some of that particle stream is still being used to make the antimatter, as I said. Uh, so if, if, uh, if Mike wants antimatter faster, then we're just going to have to put more machines in over here, because I think... I was going to say, I think all of these are running, but no, there's... Um, Oh, there are problems with getting rid of the uh, the, um, the the thermofluid, so that's going to need some redesigning and rebuilding. Uh, however, I'll talk about that a bit tomorrow because uh, Mark has been looking into possibilities there, should we say? And so, moving the uh, the particle stream production to over here meant that I could bring I could set up an extra train that would, that would be bringing up the lithium to make the plasma, and also the rare metals to make the ion stream. Not that that's directly relevant, and also stone to make the uh, the particle stream that we need down here. Now, as you can see, we're under quite heavy demand for stone. I'm requesting, I think, ten thousand of each. Uh, yes, 10,000 of each, 20,000 of the lithium. And over here, well, this is a bit pathetic. So there should be a train on its way up. But yes, and here we go. Here's a train on its way over. So that can come in here and unload, as you can see. So now we have, yeah, we have a bit of stone. This is all being this is all being brought up from the ground, which, you know, it's not the fastest way of bringing things over, but it, it, it does kind of work. And so now that now that can kick in. It'll, it'll, keep the, uh, it'll keep the particle stream working reasonably well. However, in the comments of the last video, somebody pointed out to me that there is another way of making particle stream. So if we look at the particle stream, we see this recipe, and this is what I think of as the standard one, the one that, we're, one that we've been using all over the place. So you bring in the material testing packs, you bring in sand that's here being crushed on site, you bring in plasma stream, and it produces particle stream. And we've got, as you can see, we've made 50 of it, so we make 50 of it each time this runs. And I did the maths for this, and this costs each, each individual particle stream cloud, so one, of the, one out of this 50, costs 0.7 resources. So the resources, the, the, adding all together all the resources required to make the material testing pack, which is about nine per pack. The sand, which, well, stone is one, and you get about, um, what's the recipe? And then you get seven to eight, for, you get seven and a half for every three stone. Uh, so we need a bit for that. And then the plasma stream, which costs about 0.17 e resources each. So we'll add all that together and then divide by 50. And it's about 0.7 resources per particle stream. Uh, and that's not including any of any uh, productivity modules we may have here and there. Uh, I've decided to just do this without the productivity because otherwise I run out of sanity. However, there are also various other recipes you can use, which turn all the different ore types into um, into particle stream, and they also but they also use up a bit of a matter liberation data card as well. And so I was thinking, okay, so yes, sure, you, we, we, we can do this, it, it, it is a thing that we're capable of. However, burning data cards in order to make particle stream seems rather inefficient when we can just make it from mundane relatively mundane resources like this. However, when I then did the maths, if I look at if I look at stone because we have plenty of it. Um, if, if, when I did the maths, I work out, so actually, because you get 100 each time this runs, and you run, and, and you only have a 1% chance of the matter liberation data card being destroyed, you actually get 10,000 particle stream for each matter liberation data. And so, uh, I decided it was worth setting up an area, uh, do, doing that, and would see, see how it went. So down here at the bottom of um, matter science, because, I mean, at the bottom of matter science, because then it's really, really easy to pull the cards through, I've got this area where we are, in fact, doing the, uh, we're turning stone into particle stream. Um, and then, I, and after the stream, this this is working really really nicely. We're producing we're producing quite a lot of particle stream here, and I, I did I then did the maths again, and so okay, granted, making one of these um, making one of these matter matter liberation data packs is is quite expensive. It costs a total of two hundred and forty three resources to make it because in here you've got uh, you've got more of these material testing packs, which are about nine each. Then you've got the radiation data, uh, which uses uranium, and making making uranium two three five costs about thirty resources, and that's not including the um, the iron and the sulfur to make the acid. It's just generally it's just they're just fairly expensive. And the hot thermodynamics data requires more material testing packs. It requires a blank. They both require blank data cards, which aren't exactly cheap themselves. So putting everything together, making one of these matter liberation data does cost 243 resources, roughly. However, because you then get 10,000 uh, particle stream out of that, that brings the overall cost of particle stream made, made this way down to about 0.12. 
which is roughly a sixth of the cost of making it from the other recipe. Uh, and also, this doesn't have the massive, massive resource load or logistics load of bringing up all of that stone and all of that lithium up into space in order to in order to convert it. As you saw when we looked at this over here, it had run out of stone at the time when we were looking at it, uh, and, and the train well, the train's just about finished unloading now, but we it churns through the stone sufficiently quickly that having a train bringing it up, it is struggling to keep up. Is this warehouse full? And we've also, I've also overordered on the lithium, so we have an overly full warehouse here. So this is actually just straight up broken. So what I think I'm going to be doing in the next in the next stream, and this is a bit of a shame because I spent some time setting all of this up, but he's going to be pulling out all of this because it's completely unnecessary, and then switching over to down here, massively expanding this area to make huge amounts of uh, particle stream from from these machines. They're not enormously quick, but I'm going to need to. But I can put in more of them. The problem is these are material fabricators, and these machines don't take modules, so you can't speed beacon them. You can't put speed modules in them. You can't cut down on the amount of power, which is also a shame because they do take 250 meg megawatts each, which is it's just quite a lot. It's not obscene, but it's, it's it's quite a lot. So my plan is going to be to put in another row of these along underneath here, probably extend these rows out a bit further, basically massively increase the number of these a uh, number of these machines we've got making the particle stream, um, and and try and pull it pull it away from the other machines that are making it. So looking at this graph, I strongly sus I don't I don't really know exactly how to judge it. Um it's it's a little tricky. But I was going to say I think down here maybe this was when we were just making it over in the cloud storage area and then it came up to or here maybe. Then it came up to about here when I started making it over by deep space science and then up to here when we started making it with these machines. I am not certain. Um but at some but anyway, this this method is so much cheaper that I think this is going to be the one to go for. And so, yes, I'm going to be doing a little bit, a little bit of rebuilding over here, redesigning, putting in a lot more of these machines so we can start churning out the um, uh, start churning out the particle stream much more quickly with this. And also, the other part of that will be flipping around this station up here. Um, in fact, I already have, and turning this from being a particle stream uh, drop-off station to a particle stream pickup station. Um, so we've now we've now done that. It's now, as you can see, it's it's, it's done particle stream pickup. It's trying to go to particle stream drop because it's full and it hasn't got anywhere to go because we've got enough of it now. So things seem to be going pretty well over here. Having found this, having now found this new recipe, that has cracked the particle stream problem for us, and with very 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 good timing as well. So I'm very very pleased about that. Um, and. In case anyone's wondering why we didn't do this before, uh, I'm going to say that it's because we, uh, we we only managed to research this this these recipes in the last stream. So I put it in more or less as soon as I could, and then did the maths to work out how uh, how good it was going to be. Um, but yeah, we couldn't have done it sooner just because we didn't have the uh, didn't didn't have the technology. The other interesting part about this system is that yes, down here we have a stone train that is bringing in stone, as you can see, as you'd expect, as you know, you would expect a stone train to do. It's kind of what they're for. But this one is not doing the Norvis Norbit run. This one is bringing it over directly from the Andrigan spaceship, and so this uses the other alter the alternative train system that is a little bit weird. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk through. I've, I've spoken about this before, but I think it's interesting enough that it's worth mentioning again. So. We have the trains here, and this this one, because it's designed to go from the spaceport over here, it goes then down the secondary elevator, drops off at the bottom, and then comes back up again. So we've got Andrigan Stone pickup, go down the secondary elevator, drop it off the stone from space as required, and then come back up again. However, that doesn't that doesn't allow me to bring the train over here. So in order to bring the train over here, I've added in an additional stone drop entry in here, and you can see that now this one is disabled, so the train is not going to go here. It's going to it's going to skip over this station if it ever tries to get to, to do this one. And so we need something that tells the train when to leave. And so down here we have this 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 uh, combinator here that's watching how much stone is in the warehouse. And if it gets below uh, ten thousand, then it'll output one stone signal onto the red circuit network. That network is connected all the way around through the pylons, all the way over to the spaceport, and to the to the uh, to the stone station no, stone train over here comes in on this cable here. And so the train is then told to depart only if there is a signal somewhere telling it to go. And so it watch it watches out for that signal. So when either on the ground or up here it's starting to run a bit low on stone, it, they'll send that signal through. The train will depart, and if it's up here that is requesting it, then this stone drop station will be active. So the train will go here and drop off. If it's not active, it'll skip the station. It'll go down the elevator and drop off the stone down on the ground. The clever bit that it actually isn't working at the moment because I put the station in the wrong place is that uh, there should there is also an additional Norvis secondary down station over here this one 
And the idea of this is that it will tell, it, it gives the train somewhere to go. So when the train leaves from here, it, it can then go to this Norvis secondary down station uh, instead of going actually down the elevator. And at that point, it will go, I don't understand about Stone Drop. I don't understand about uh, Norvis secondary up. I'll just go back to where I, where I pick up all my supplies from. And so it means that we can have the train do either one of the routes. Um, it's, capable, it's capable of doing either one, um, but it won't try and do both of them, except it is at the moment because this station is in the wrong place. I think this just needs to move one notch further out, so it's so it's outside the train, so it's outside where the train parks, um, and then probably move these uh, signals out as well to, a, to sort of allow everything to fit. I don't know. I'll have to have a look at another another station where that's been done, like up here for Vulcanite. So if we look at this station, you can see that the uh, the train fits in just on the near side of the station because the trains are four things long. But if I look down here again. Yeah, the train, the train, the, the, the train doesn't quite fit in here. So I guess the best way to do this is probably going to be to put in another piece of rail there, and then move the station along like that. Uh, that was the, that. In case you're wondering, was the uh, dolly pickers mod, which is extremely useful for moving things around when uh, without, when you don't want to have to move them around. Unfortunately, that means that now the all, all of this is in the wrong place. I'm going to have to nudge this across and all of this across a bit. And it is going to some tidying up is going to be required. But basically, that now means that the train will fit in there uh, around the station. The other alternative would be to remove the uh, the signal and move the station across. Um, but that would make it awkward and different. Yeah, maybe I could put the signals on these on these bits of tracks. I'll play around with it, see what seems easier. Right, now I've uh, moved things around a bit. I've put down some extra flooring. We've got a couple, we've got signals that are moved, well, signal blueprints to be moved over there. So now I could potentially move that signal to, that this stop, to, the train stop to here. And now if I mouse over this one, you can see there's, there is just room there. So I think that should now, that should fix the problem. And then that is, that is easier. That's going to be much easier than, start, than trying to move the uh, warehouse around. Because um, I'll have to move it a couple of spaces to the right and there's not enough flooring there. And I have to, then I have to move all these loaders as well. And yeah, that would be a whole thing. That said, it would be slightly neater rather than having the signals in there. We'll see. This system, this this is basically okay as it is now. And so, after making all those modifications, getting the particle stream up and running, as you saw, the the, the uh, deep space science now seems to be pretty happy. We'll find out how 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 happy it, it really is once over here. Let's move that up as well. There we go. Uh, once we eventually get all of this running at full speed and using using up the deep space scientists and maybe even the advanced science packs as well. I don't know. We might need to wait for that to have a proper supply of those before we use too many of them. But yes, when we once we get this running through and eating the uh, deep space sciences at a decent rate, then we can get an idea of whether things are running fast enough and whether further messing around with the deep space science is, is required but uh, that, that's going to be a thing for a future video so thank you very much for watching i'll be back tomorrow with the other half of this video where i shall talk about what mark's been doing and a few other things that i that uh, myself and tristan have been up to as well because there's there's still there's still quite a lot more to talk about uh, we'll be back on monday with the uh, next part of the stream so we'll be carrying on with the sort of things i've been talking about here fixing up some of these problems um, and then as well i shall be back on uh, wednesday for another satisfactory stream when i should be carrying continuing building out my town system and trying to get more of the more of the more advanced stuff made so if you want to see me messing around with these sort of problems but in three dimensions then come along to that stream um, and as, as I say come along on Monday don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the videos and I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching see you later